with the Greenwood Board of Public Works and Safety to order at 5.30 p.m. Uh, we thank you all for um, connecting uh, with by WebEx. Uh, we are trying to do these video things to keep a little bit more safe. And we appreciate your cooperation with them. If there's any point in time where you don't um, understand Matt, what's going on or you can't hear somebody, I'll join the meeting. please interrupt us and we'll try and make certain we get that uh, figured out so that we can um, hear from you. Uh, with that, uh, Amanda, if you'd go ahead and make the roll call. Mr. Rutherford? Here. Mr. Colvin? Here. Mr. Hoover? Here. Does the record show we have a quorum. The minutes of the regular session of April 6, 2020 have been distributed to members of the board. Any questions, deletions, corrections, or otherwise from the members of the staff? <coughs> Hearing none, I'd, I'd appreciate a, a memo for a motion for approval. So moved. Is Mr. Colvin? Yeah. Second. Second by Mr. Rutherford. Uh, further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Amanda, do we need to, if, we're, if we have a uh, unanimous vote, uh, maybe this should be directed to Sam, uh, do we need to have a roll call vote? Sam? No, as long as the vote's unanimous. Linda Gibson. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, first on the agenda then is, I'll join the meeting. is Mark Whitaker. Uh, he's got an encroachment request for 1072 Heatherwood Drive. Mr. Whitaker, are you there? Here. Here. Okay. Our staff has prepared a memo. I'm not sure whether you've seen it or not. It's dated today from Brock Sears uh, regarding the request that you made. Yes, I can see that on okay. my screen. Uh, Daniel, you want to leave, take us through this? Sure, I can do that as long as you can hear me just well. I respond. I can hear you. Okay. All right. Well, uh, Residents are, are requesting to uh, install a fence. You can see in the graphic there that's shown by the red line. Uh, the green line on the east side of the property, there is an existing fence there. And so uh, their, their uh, resident, the petitioner, is wanting to uh, tie in his fence uh, there on the east side of his property to tie in with the existing fence. The blue shows the uh, existing storm sewer. There is a, a uh, inlet there that outlets, and there's also, hi as highlighted by yellow, uh, the uh, existing concrete uh, drainage swale. Let's kind of flatten that area. That's so years ago that was installed with development. So uh, our our recommendation is to uh, to approve this. Uh, there are some conditions. Sean Cooper has joined the meeting. So. Uh, Mr. Whitaker, did you happen to receive an email? It would have been sent out uh, later this afternoon uh, with, an, with a PDF document that would have included uh, this graphic along with a uh, letter as well. Did you happen to receive that? Um, I am checking right now. Um... And I, I ask that just because in the, the first page of that PDF, there's uh, four, four conditions um that are uh, part of that and we just uh, before uh, mr hoover walked through those with you just wanted to make sure that you had that copy in front of you yeah i think i just i'm pulling it up Matt right now. Oh, yes. has left the meeting hey mark when you get it let us know okay I'm, I'm pulling it up right now reading it okay Oh yeah, in short, we are recommending that the board approve this request uh, subject to those uh, four conditions. Have you got through those yet? Just these are fairly standard conditions that we um, ask to be imposed. 
uh, that it, the first one is that the encroachment not uh, uh, constrict any uh, drainage on the property. Mm -hmm. That uh, and the second one is that you notify the stormwater department following the uh, completion of the fence construction so if they can come out and make an inspection, make sure there's been no damage to the uh, existing um, swale or piping. And the third one is one we want to highlight that if it ever comes necessary for any work to be done in the easement uh, by the, utili the utilities or the city, that you would be responsible for removal and replacement of that portion of the fence uh, at your expense. And then the last one is that you notify Indiana 811 prior to installing any uh, fencing. Is all of those uh, conditions acceptable to you? Yes, all, all four are acceptable to me. I'm good with it. Okay. Any other questions from the board from uh, Mr. Johnson, for Mr. Johnson or for Mr. Whitaker? Move for approval subject to those four conditions. Mr. Rutherford, move for approval. I'll second. Mr. Colvin, second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Mr. Whitaker. Good luck to you. Thank you. Fine. Thank you. Next on our agenda is 629 Locust Grove Lane, Lot 147 in Barton Lakes. I understand that like Mr. and Ms. Tibbs with us? Yes, we are. Tibbs, okay. Um, we have, uh, and you want to take us through uh, this one as well? Sure, very similar just to the petition uh, before us. Uh, the residents do want to install a, a fence on their property. Um, you can see the in the graphic, there's the, the red line. Uh, just the one thing to note about this property, it does have a six foot no build easement there identified on the west side of the property in the yellow highlight. Um, there's also a, uh, an existing storm sewer pipe there uh, in, in blue. And so uh, Mrs. Tibbs, also uh, you should have received an email uh, later this afternoon uh, with a PDF attachment that would have had a, a memorandum and a, a couple graphics there. Did you happen to receive that? Oh, we have it. Okay. Well, then you there's can... a, the same four conditions, uh, Ms. Tibbs, are, are there. Have you had a chance to review those? We have, and we agree to all four. Okay. Any further questions in from the board uh, for Mr. Johnson or for the homeowners? I move that we approve the subject to those conditions. Second. Mr. Ruff, did Mr. Rutherford make that motion? Mr. Colvin. Mr. Colvin made it and Mr. Rutherford seconded it. Was there anyone else from the audience who who's who joined the meeting who wishes to speak to this? Okay, seeing none, all in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Uh, thank you, Ms. Tibbs. Thank you. Okay. Now we'll move on to uh, 1275 West Main Street. Uh, Brian Walker. Uh, good evening. Yeah, good evening, everybody. Good evening. Thank you. Um, What's going on, Brian? Well, um, you guys probably are familiar with our place out here on Main Street. Um, the problem that I'm having is at the address 1468 West Main Street. There's about 40 acres across the street from the uh, CCG Church down the road, and we had a lot of drainage problems last year. I probably lost about 20 acres of that field um, due to drainage issues, one of which was my own problem that I've kind of taken care of. The other one was a blockage that one of the property owners put in a, um, a dam with concrete and, tar and some different things, and I had to dig it up and got that resolved. But then where you see dozer work uh, on the south edge of there, the south end of the field, the first one, uh, there's an individual down there that is kind of blocking the water flow to the uh, easement or a drain easement. And it used to be managed by the county, but I think when the city annexed the whole area, they um, 
the county dropped that off their inventory and uh, reverted back to homeowners association. So I'm kind of in a bad spot where I don't know if I should go in with my equipment and clean it up because it just creates um, difficult conversations. <laughs> so I was trying to reach out to the city to see what might be the best way to fix the problem and not, you know, upset anybody and make sure that we're doing things the right way uh, on top of that. Uh, so the, the one that shows up as number one is the one that I'm focused on right now. I fixed number two already, um, but that one goes into other people's yards. Um, it is an easement for the drainage, but it's still got grass on it. I think if I were to go back there and clean it up, it would probably create um, some ruckus. I don't want to do that. Okay. I'm trying to come to figure out what the best best approach is. Daniel, have you had a chance to look at this or think about this? We have uh, briefly, I know that uh, a number of staff have had some emails about the issue. I think even some stormwater staff went out last week maybe and, and took some photos trying to understand the situation. Deputy Mayor McLaughlin, I saw that you were on here. Have you been involved in this? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Hoover. Uh, Stormwater has been out to take a look at this and uh, spoke with Mr. Walker. And I, I think it was Stormwater's uh, uh, recommendation that he come before the board. I believe uh, in the past, if the board issues, uh, I believe, an order to uh, take care of this, that's my understanding, that's... Uh, we might have did one other one. I can't remember which one that is at this point in time. Well, it sounds like it needs to be addressed. Um, Sam, is there anything from legal that we need to be cognizant of? I don't believe so. It's within your authority to um, um, enforce the um, stormwater ordinance. So we would direct, if, if that be the pleasure of the board, we would direct stormwater um, staff to work with legal to enforce the um, stormwater ordinance. Sam, would that be what uh, a resolution could be? That's what I would suggest. Okay. Yeah, Kevin, favor, I'd be in favor of that because it looks like they're blocking this, damming up this water and causing the problem. Yeah. Somebody wanted to say something. I wasn't sure who it was. Yeah, yeah, Mr. Hoover, this is this is Brian Walker. I just was wondering if I could ask a question. Sure. Um, so one of the property owners, he wants to fix the problem too because he his backyard is a pond and it's you know just nasty to look at. He'd rather it be cleaned up as well. Um, one of the other property owners, I can't get in contact, with, and he's the one that's kind of blocking stuff up. Um, so if there's a, I think I understand what happens here. Um, what I'm trying to do is, is handle it in a way that nobody gets mad. Um, and if there's even some cost, I'm willing to pitch in and help out with that just to make the problem go away. So I don't know if that means anything or not, but <laughs> I just wanted to throw that out there. Money always talks, but yeah, I, and I appreciate that, Brian, that you're trying to do this as amicably as possible, but uh, it's a problem we've got to get fixed. And if we've got a property owner who's being a little bit recalcitrant with this, we need to take whatever action we can to enforce that. Um, yep. Mr. Hoover, this is Chris Jones of the Stormwater Department. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's what, you know, what uh, we've suggested that Brian come to the Board of Works because as, as we did in the homecoming subdivision, where somebody had failed to maintain their swale, just as stated in the flats, that they, they're supposed to get 10 days 
uh, of notice and they need to remove the obstructions and, and you know, re fix the swale um, and the drainage pattern or the Board of Works then will uh, authorize that work to be done and bill the appropriate owner. Okay. I'm not sure if that addresses when we say bill the appropriate owner, whether or not Mr. Walker may be willing to uh, help out or the other uh, property owner who's willing to do some of the work himself. I suppose that could be worked out as part of the uh, with working with stormwater. I would assume. Yeah, I mean, if there's a if there was a, a way we could to a point where there was a certain amount of cost it would take to fix this problem for all three people, uh, residents or property owners, um, I'd be willing to take the bill, divide it by three, and go that direction. I just, I don't, I don't want to be, I don't want to upset the neighbors, but I do know that this is a, this is just a mess. <laughs> it needs to be fixed. And you're not the only one who's probably upset about it. So that's no, uh -uh, no, I'm not. Um, what's the pleasure of the board? I believe your action is correct, Kevin, and turning over to the stormwater department and issue a time frame and make the offer from uh, Ryan Walker. Okay. So I'll take that as a motion by Mr. Rutherford. I'll second that. Uh, any further discussion? Kevin, this is Jeff Colvin. I just want to make sure that whatever uh, construction activity takes place there, um, we have engineering review that to make sure that's going to address the problem. Um, you know, I'd hate for people to spend money and time on a drainage issue, uh, get in there and do something, and then it doesn't take care of the problem. Good point. Agreed. And that would be part of the, uh, when the stormwater is going to issue an order, uh, they're going to have to figure out what takes to comply with the order. Right, Chris? Chris, you there? Uh, this, this is Brian again. Uh, Jeff, you're right, but if you come back here and look at it, I mean, I think for the most part, we cut down an old nasty tree that just grew up as a weed at one point and cleaned the dirt up and maybe sow some grass and Put it back like it was when it was originally put in, and probably be fine. I don't think it's going to be a huge amount of expense. But okay. further discussion. <clears throat> Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Brian, thanks for bringing this to our attention, and hopefully, we can get it resolved fairly quickly. Thank you guys very much for listening to it. I appreciate Take it. Care. Have a good yes, evening. Sir. You too. Weber, you're up for 653 East Pearl Street. Well, hello, everybody. Hello. I'm Lowell Weber, Building Commissioner for the City of Greenwood. Um, I, I hope that uh, Paul has uh, maybe gotten to you the memo. I have a copy of it. Yes. All right. And also, along with that, there should have been um, some copies of my uh, um, memo to the plan commission at the time that had some pictures all right there there was okay. mine okay so um what we have is at uh, 653 east pearl street we have a uh, house that has had a fire damage a year ago about december and um we've been working with the owner uh the owner actually lives in florida and um obviously it's vacated and not being lived in and unable to be lived in. Um, the owners had some issues with the insurance company. Um, they've been back and forth, and it's just gotten to the point where nothing is being done. So I did have an order of abatement that the uh, plan commission approved, and um, we are uh, at the point now where we uh, are needing to take it down. So. Um, the 30 days for the owners to complete the work has, has passed. Uh, legal has uh, recorded the order of abatement. Uh, we are, we're at this point where I need your approval to uh, submit a um, bid packet and advertise to get um, costs. Is anyone else from the audience uh, who's on the board this meeting uh, wish to address this? 
Seeing none, we, I think, Chan and Jeff, we have a memo in front of us with a proposed motion. Is there a willingness to make that motion? So moved. Chan made the motion. Yes, Jeff seconded. Uh, further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. All right. Thank you, Lowell. Thank have a good evening. Nope. Thank you, and have a good evening, all. Next, we'll turn to Kenny Duncan, the street department. Yeah. Hi, guys. Good evening, Kenny. Kenny. Hopefully, my emails made it to you. They have. Uh, and what I have is two items. One's a state spec glass beads that goes in our paint uh, for this year. And I sent it out to four people. Enos Flint didn't bid this year. They're selling their part of the company to Potter Industries. Uh, Sherman Williams didn't bid. MGI bid, Pro Products. Uh, and it was 22,000 pounds of beads. And they were priced 48 cents. A I've left the meeting. For 10,560 bucks. And Swarco, for the same 22,000 pounds of beads, was 41 cents a pound. And they came in at $9,020. And that's the beads we've used in the past anyway. So I'd like to recommend we buy our beads from Swarco Industries. Kenny, I know and some sometimes we sort of double bid those. Um, is that something we need to consider here? No. Okay. No. Uh, no supply issues. Swarco or beads like that. work real well for us, and other people don't bid those. So I mean we try different ones and Potter might be involved next year, but I don't know. We just had so much problem with other people when they, when they had bid it before that their beads would be wet or, or have a few paper products in it. And then it don't, it don't hit the pavement. Okay. So I think Swarco is a legitimate bidder. And so I think you're recommending Swarco is the lowest responsive and responsive. Yeah. Bidder. Okay. Is there a motion to approve uh, issuing the contract to Swarco? So moved. Mr. Calder yeah. moved. Mr. Rutherford second. Further discussion? Being that, all in favor say aye. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. All right. The, the second thing is my uh, fast dry uh, state spec paint. And what I did is put it out for bid for 1,600 gallons of waterborne white. 1,400 gallons of waterborne yellow and MGI come in at $40,180. Enos Flint came in at $30,940. And then Sherman Williams come in at $28,470. So I'd like to go at nine dollars and 49 cents a gallon with sherman williams i'd like to go with sherman williams it's a big price difference <laughs> yes it is and they're right here so if i need more than that there's not a shipping cost added on or nothing it's did they win the bid last year yes they did that's what i thought I would move that we accept the Sherwin Williams as the lowest and most responsive bidder. Second. Mr. Colvin moved, seconded by Mr. Rutherford to accept the Sherwin Williams uh, bid and issue the contract to them. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Thank, Thank you. you, Kenny. Yeah. Next, let's move to Mr. Petty. Todd, are you there? It was up there. Yeah. Can you hear me now? There you go. Sorry, Talk I got muted five. somehow. Okay. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Uh, basically, what I have tonight is the board approved a list of equipment for the street department along with the Huntington lease at, I believe, the March 2nd meeting with do not exceed numbers. And 
that. We've accomplished all that, and I'm back to give you the final numbers on those and include some equipment we'd like to trade in regarding this and give you final pricing. I can go through the list and discuss it at the end, or I can take them one at a time, however you would like to do it. Well, we've already approved the, the purchase with a not to exceed price on all of this, correct? Correct. And all the proposed purchases, even with the trade-ins, appear to be below that not to exceed price. That is correct. The, okay. the main thing is I did not have the trade-ins at, at available at the time when I passed this, so I need to get the uh, equipment approved to trade off towards the purchase of the new, the old approved to purchase or trade towards the new. Todd, I'm guessing that you're recommending that we accept uh, and approve the trade-in prices that you've quoted in this document? I am. Okay. Any questions then for Mr. Petty from Mr. Rutherford or Mr. Cauldron? Seeing none, is there a motion to ratify uh, the purchase of these items, including the, at the prices indicated, including the prices for the traded in vehicles. I'll move for approval. Second. Mr. Rutherford moves, seconded by Mr. Colvin. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Thanks, Todd. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we'll go to move to Medical Behavior Hospital, American Structure Point. Danny, you there? Yep. Good yep. Evening. This is uh, Dan Kamichek with American Structure Point. How are you? Good. Good. What do you want? Hey, Bob, Bob, Avery with, Bob, Bob Avery with Metastar is on the line as well. Okay. Thank you, Bob. Sir. Sure. And you want to start off and tell us what we're looking at? Sure. Um, the first uh, bullet point on the agenda is the acceptance of the performance guarantee, um, which is was actually provided by um, I think by Metastar on this project, they're the owner of the project. Uh, just to give everybody a little bit of a background, this is a uh, 42, approximately 42,000 square foot single story facility um, on about a five and a half acre parcel of land uh, located. It's, it's kind of just south of the, uh, the Walmart there in town um, over on uh, Wilson Drive. And that's uh, just kind of east of uh, Emerson. So the first item, like I said, was uh, just for, to get uh, acceptance of the performance guarantee, which I believe has been submitted and hard copy submitted to uh, uh, the city engineering department. Uh, Dan, we have a memo uh, from Paul Peone dated today uh, regarding some of the things that are on the agenda. Have you seen that? I have not. Okay. Um, maybe. Uh, Dan, are you there? Uh, yes, I'm here. Okay. Um, anything unusual? The, the first three items are kind of like the, uh, let's talk about the uh, encroachment waiver request for the landscaping separately, but the other things, uh, inspection and testing agreements and uh, accepting the performance guarantees. Anything out of the ordinary there? Uh, no, there's no, there's not. So that there in the memo is is our uh, recommendation to accept these performance guarantees uh, to accept the and execute the general and sanitary sewer inspection and testing agreements and ratify the acceptance of 50 percent upfront uh, fee and then also execute the final final plat as well that's dealing with the easements isn't it for the landscaping well, the the uh, encroachment request is the uh, is the item number four, so that can be separate. Okay. Any questions for Dan or either Dan <laughs> uh, from the board, <coughs> Mr. Avery, I suppose. If not, I'll move that we approve, uh, accept the, the performance guarantees, uh, and accept the and execute the general and sanitary sewer inspection and testing agreements, and accept the fifty percent. Uh, related fees. Is there a second? I'll second. second. Yeah, either one. Uh, Hoover seconded, or excuse me, Hoover moved and Mr. Rutherford seconded. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Now, if uh, someone will explain what we're doing on the easement encroachment. 
Yes, uh, this is Dan Kamichek with Structure Point. I think I can highlight that. Um, there was and, an exhibit that I passed along to Paul, and um, I was wondering if you guys had seen that. Um, I think he was going to send it over to you, uh, which basically had highlighted um, some of the plantings that we had um, out on the front side, of, on the north side of this project. Uh, were you guys given that exhibit by chance? Well, Molly's got something up for us. Uh, I was not sent the exhibit if it's not what you are looking at on your screen right now. Okay. We, we do have, so, um, I've got Jeff, Shan, do you guys have the, uh, the third, that's the third page that I have is, is more of a graphic. It shows the um, plantings along the property. Well, I don't have it. I don't either. I'm, I'm looking for. Hmm. It was attached to uh, Brock's memo of today is what I had. It's, it's on Brock's memo, which actually I think you got three times today with all the amendments. So, but that page never changed. Well, Dan, why don't you? Um, yeah, I, I, I can, what I can do is I can try to explain it in, in the best layman terms without having a, a visual aid here. And I, I do apologize that that uh, did not get forwarded to you guys beforehand. Um, I, I was, I thought that had been coordinated, but what we're basically seeking is um, across the frontage, the entire north frontage of the property. Um, we, we, as part of this project, we're putting in a sanitary sewer main extension um, that's going to be coming from the west uh, to the east across our property. Um, obviously, the city of Greenwood, and, and we worked with uh, Page Story quite a bit um, when we were kind of finalizing our documents. However, uh, we ran into a situation where you know, there, there's a there's a line in the ordinance that basically reads that uh, you're not allowed to have uh, landscaping items in these uh, the drainage and utility slash sanitary sewer easement. However, um, when we looked for alternative locations, um, she still felt that it would be the best look and, and kind of the, the closest to the code to still have these plantings out there in the easement. So what we did was is, uh, the sanitary sewer will go in and I believe the closest planting is going to be approximately five feet from the sanitary sewer itself. So we feel we feel that we place these in a location that really won't adversely affect any type of means and methods that would be required in order to get to that sanitary sewer main in the future, uh, while still providing the aesthetics and and the and the green uh, the green space requirements as re as required by the uh, the city code. So we'd be looking for the uh, the approval tonight to to move forward and to have those plantings within that easement. Dan, what kind of what are the plantings? Um, I can pull it up. Yeah, I, I, can, I apologize. Well, I Not assume it's something. But. It's probably on this uh, graphic, but it's my old eyes can't read the small print. I found it. I found it. I assume it's something without. Huge root structures. Um, yeah, so they're they're mostly just shrub plantings. Um, there are a couple of trees. Uh, there are one, two, three, four, five, six trees that are going to be across, you know, in that frontage. But it's predominantly shrubs. Um, again, we've we've located the trees in a location where they're going to be the furthest away. From the um, from the sanitary sewer that we that we possibly can to the north, and our sanitary sewer is going to be uh, a little bit closer to the property itself. Um, we do feel that with the depth of the sanitary and with that spacing requirement, that you know tree roots really won't uh, won't really affect that line. I mean, never say never, but uh, we feel pretty confident that they're in the best spot to again meet the requirement uh, of the ordinance while uh, while making while being in, within this easement. Uh, Mr. Johnson, uh, we've got a memo from Brock here. Um, what is uh, your office's position on this? Sure. Uh, we yeah, we uh, we recommend the approval of that uh, subject uh, to the conditions that are in in the memo memo there. And Dan Kuminick, have you seen that memo with those four conditions? I have, this is Bob with Metastar. I have not seen that, um, but is it the same four conditions as um, I believe Mr. Whitaker and, and Robert and Amber Tibbs? 
very close. We want to be the encroachment agreement, which they didn't necessarily have. We prepared by the legal department, um, and that uh, the plantings be allowed to construct for uh, be constructed so as to allow for adequate drain, drainage. Gosh, uh, and if there's any work that has to be done, it's at the property owner's um, cost to remove and replace those plantings. And that Indiana eight one one is notified. Any problem with any okay, of those yeah. conditions? No, not at all. Dan, you have any problem with those? No. I'm I'm fine with them as well. Okay. Uh, what's the pleasure of the board then? I would move that we approve subject to those conditions. Second. That's Mr. Calvert's motion, seconded by Mr. Rutherford. Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. aye, aye. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, gentlemen. All right, can thank I you. Just make one, can, can I make one statement, Dan? Stay on the line real quick. This is Bob with Metastar. Sure. Sure, when, Bob. when we when we went through number one and two, and they were uh, passed and approved, I don't believe I heard number three was included in that um, unanimous decision. I only heard one and two. Did I miss that? Well, if it didn't, I think that was the intent of the board. Was all, all four conditions? Yeah, all so, four conditions. Okay. And then Amanda and Daniel, uh, tell us how we will get the final plat signed and to these folks. Last, just as uh, as was done uh, last time, I think Amanda might have reached out to coordinate with the board members. Uh, where and when they could they could sign i think they were we've been dropping them off at the uh, security front desk and actually uh, sam if you're still on uh, you would also have some uh, signatures as well for the inspection and testing agreement documents i was able to get sam last time and i believe you all three have access so once i collect the documents from cds i'll set them up where i did last time in the council chambers and let us know and I should have those by tomorrow morning because Daniel had, they usually have everything together. So and then we have fully signed documents. They'll, uh, you know, they will uh, let Merrick Structure Point know. Yes. Okay. Sounds good. Bob, does that answer your question? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. I appreciate thank everybody's you. time. Okay, thank you. Okay. Right, thank now, you. Bye bye. Okay. Go to Project L. Dan, can you check with American Structure Point? Has left the meeting. John, I heard you come Bob in. Bob Avery, Metastar. Yep, I'm on. Okay, tell us what we're doing here. Has left the meeting. Okay, so I was really hoping you give that Dan Kamichi kid a lot, a lot harder time. He used to be an employee of mine, but um, <laughs> you should have told us that we would have might be done there. <laughs> <laughs> so this is uh, so Project Elk. Uh, it's been a little bit since we've had that under construction, it is the Amazon last mile facility that is at the northeast corner of Graham Road and Collins Road. So basically where Graham Road tees into Collins Road right now. Um, we are working on a, a traffic signal and we'll have some turn lanes going into there and doing an extension of Graham Road. Uh, we approached the Clark Pleasant Community School Corporation about obtaining a sliver of ground from them that would be basically was basically on our south uh, property line to be able to extend Graham Road to the east all the way to our eastern property line. Um, and then also and what the exhibit that's on the screen right now shows is we also purchased the amount of ground that would be required for the half right away because currently along their property the right of way went through to the center line was as most of the properties do. So in a good faith effort to come be good neighbors, we went ahead and purchased the right of way all the way from Graham, all the way down to Worsfield Road um, along their frontage. And so what we're tr trying to do today is dedicate the right of way for Collins Road to the city um, that's on this exhibit. And then we have revised our plat for Project Elk to include the portion of ground that would be dedicated as right away for the Graham Road extension going to the east. Okay. Questions for Sean? Daniel, this is, uh, you, your department has recommended this action, hasn't it? Uh, yes, that's correct, to accept and execute this dedication. 
I'll move for approval. Mr. Rutherford moved, second by Mr. Kalv, and further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Thanks, Sean. All right, great. Thank you so much. Have a great night. Kramer, I know you're there. We finally Sean got Cooper. You. has left the meeting. Yeah, I'm still here. Yeah. 484 North Madison Avenue, parking lot expansion. What are we doing? Yeah, we're we're wanting to uh, get the completion, you know, the performance bonds released. Um, and we'll, uh, Kevin Riddle, uh, back I don't know, back in February, he he uh, did a field inspection and saw everything was completed. So we're just wanting to get a release of the performance guarantees and acceptance of the, of the completion of the work. Daniel, anything uh, unusual of that? Uh, no. Um, well, I guess there, our, our recommendation is to acknowledge the completion of a lot of the private work and to release the performance guarantees. They did a. We did have a field inspection completed and everything was satisfactorily satisfactorily installed. Um, I guess there are two conditions to our uh, recommendation. Uh, one is actually receipt of uh, Mylar and digital as built. Uh, we did receive okay. paper, but uh, I guess receipt of Mylar and digital, and then also a uh, receipt of an upper operations and maintenance manual for the for the wallet pardon me water quality um, and then have those re that reviewed and approved by stormwater department okay the, the items. yeah we can definitely get those worked out for you guys okay. well i'll move we uh, approve that action subject to those two conditions daniel just read for a second Mr. Colvin? Yeah. Okay. Uh, moved by Hoover, second by Mr. Colvin. Uh, further discussion? Seeing that, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Brian. All right, thank you. Have a, have a nice night. You too. Okay. Is there anyone who's joined the meeting who's not necessarily on the agenda that would like to address uh, the board? Brian Kramer has left the meeting. Seeing no one from the audience wishing to address this, uh, Mr. Hodson, IDAM compliance plan status update. Sam? Are you there? Yep. Okay. Um, Al's fine with IDAM, but as part of the compliance plan, we'll be introducing to the Common Council this evening a ordinance um, uh, forbidding um, or limiting inflow it takes all the other regs and puts them into one ordinance to make it more clear um, the first up on my corporation council status of tasks i'd like to um, deal with a walk-on involving a utility easement which will serve the um, um, board of uh, the public works building sure um, gas company uh, originally intended to bring the gas service um, from um, the south side of the site um, I thought it would be too expensive because of the um, amount of dirt they'd have to move to do so and, and they've decided to bring it from the north in order to do that um, they're going to need an easement but right now we'd like um, uh, permission to enter into a right-of-way agreement to to so that the work won't be interrupted um, while we work out the terms of the easement. Um, this is crucial to get done now because we're at a stage of completing the inside of the building where uh, we will require um, warm, dry air. Okay. John Shell's here to address questions if you have any. Are there any questions for Sam or for John? Pleasure of the board of respect. Sounds like we question. need to get it done. I'll move for approval. Moved by Mr. Rutherford, second by Mr. Colvin. Um, further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. My next matter is another uh, right of entry agreement. This is one uh, that we're seeking ratification. The deputy mayor has signed it. 
and this involved uh, in, um, providing utility service um, from the electric company to a site um, near I-65 and Wilshire Road. This is not particularly for a city project, but it will certainly be useful for the city when the new sports complex is in. And um, this is a request to ratify the right of entry the deputy mayor signed until uh, and approve and um, allow the city to enter into an easement agreement when one is approved by legal. So moved. Your second. 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 Moved by Mr. Moved by Mr. Hoover, seconded by Mr. Rutherford. Further discussion? Mayor, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Item on your agenda is a Title um, VI report, which um, we're asking to continue to the next meeting. So moved. Second. Moved by Hoover, second by Mr. Colvin to continue to the next regularly scheduled meeting. Further discussion? Seeing that, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Uh, the final thing is ratification of a revised mm -hmm. speedway encroachment agreement. This is an agreement that you have already approved, but in the first um, um, draft of the agreement, um, um, we did not uh, address a 25 foot sewer easement, um, which needs to be addressed in order for this project to move forward. Um, I think if you have questions, Daniel would be the best person to re request the question, but there's um, from legal standpoint, it was something that um, was contemplated, uh, it was just um, omitted. Okay. Questions for Sam or Mr. Johnston? Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Mr. Colvin moved, second by Mr. Rutherford. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. All I have. No, Sam, Sam, you have that certified lawn care PSA. Oh, I'm sorry, that's another. Yeah, this that is, is another walk on agreement. I think was added today to um, um, to enter into an agreement to do some um, lawn maintenance on um, some parcels. This is a document, guys. Shannon and Jeff titled Public Works Contract. Yes, it um, um, involves um, five different locations. Madison Avenue, Serena Way, Emerson, 200 Emerson Avenue, and then um, Old Town area generally. And it's a total contract price of 38.75.50. That is correct. I would, move that we, I would move that we approve this. Second. Moved by Mr. Colvin, second by Mr. Rutherford for approval. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Pass unanimously. Okay. Now you're done, Sam. Thank you. Thanks. Daniel. South right, Tech uh, Drive. So the first item we have, South Tech Drive extension. Uh, all the performance guarantees have been reviewed and approved by legal and engineering. Inspection testing agreements are, are in order. So our recommendation is to accept the performance guarantees to accept and execute the gen general and sanitary sewer inspection agreement and testing agreements and to ratify the acceptance of the 50% upfront fee. So moved. I'll second. Moved by Hoover, second by Mr. Colvin. Uh, further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Our next item is our uh, 2020, 2020 annual paving project. Um, we changed it, you know, normally you, you, this is the annual Duminous overlay project. Uh, we switched it around. It's, the work involved this year is a little more, um, it's, it, the scope is, is bigger. There's a little more pavement replacement than just a simple mill and overlay. Um, so for the project that we have, uh, they are uh, currently have been published for bids. Uh, our bid opening will be on uh, May 1st. And what you see on the screen now, that is our base bid uh, for Brewer Place, Fairview Drive South, and for Kearney Street. 
this uh, essentially uh, finishes out this uh, neighborhood uh, that we've been working on for the past couple of years. And I think maybe the next slide. Molly, if you're able to. Uh, another slide for the paving project. If it's there, if it's not, which is fine. It is not there. Okay, so we also had, uh, in addition to these three base bid locations, we also had three alternate bid uh, sites. And so we are, when the bid comes in, we'll evaluate which of the alternate sites will able to be able to incorporate into the job uh, along with these three base bid sites. And so our, our request is to uh, ratify the staff prepared the specifications and advertise for this project, the 2020 annual paving project. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Second. Moved by Mr. Colvin, second by Mr. Ruth for further discussion. Seeing that, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. And then my last item, it's uh, regards to the upcoming Main Street and Meadowview Drive uh, roundabout. So this graphic generally represents what that project will look like. And so uh, as part, since this is an NDOT LPA job, uh, NDOT does uh, have a requirement for the local entity to commit to their local share of the funding uh, roughly four to six months uh, in advance of the project letting. This project will let uh, this coming October uh, we anticipate that the construction will occur uh, late spring through late summer of next year. Um, it's still under design, so that's still uh, to be determined exactly. Um, but for the uh, funding source of this project, it's going to be our uh, CCI rate uh, funds. And so the Board of Works is actually the fiscal body that's going to be able to make that commitment of the, the local share. So. Uh, we're estimating in terms of the range of this project, um, and I don't necessarily want to show the city's hand, uh, but uh, the range that we're looking at is somewhere between 800,000 to 1 million uh, potential construction costs. Uh, in addition, inspection, construction inspection costs possibly over a little, uh, a little over uh, $100,000 uh, for that. So our uh, estimated local share of construction cost uh, right now is approximately 238,000. And that does include uh, some contingency on the construction side. So tonight there's actually uh, no action. I just wanted to bring this up to your attention. Next meeting, uh, we'll have a, a more formal uh, resolution document that will coordinate with the legal department to uh, uh, prepare that will be available for your signatures. And then the, uh, sec the second bullet on this project uh, for an update on the RFP responses for construction inspection. Uh, that RFP was published back on March 11th. Um, again, per NDOT procedures. Uh, the deadline was April 10th, just a couple Fridays ago, and we actually received 10, 10 responses uh, so we're now in the process of scoring, evaluating, scoring, and ranking those uh, to determine who's going to represent the city in terms of inspecting this project. Now, more info to follow in the future. Okay, thanks, Daniel. <clears throat> Anything else? Uh, no, that's all I have. Thank okay, you. thank you. Mr. Wright. Yes, good evening. Um, so this evening, the uh, liability and property insurance, uh, bringing a recommendation uh, for approval on um, left the, the uh, package that was presented to us from Green Owens O and I Insurance. Um, there is approximately an eight percent increase total. Um, to that related to additional property we have, uh, also being driven by the builder's risk insurance that uh, we're carrying right now on the DPW building and station 93. When those uh, finish, we were informed by our uh, insurance agent that we would see a reduction in that premium. 
So that'll come down some after we finish those projects. Um, the, the other one that's uh, increased pretty significantly um, is related to the uh, the general liability and the umbrella policy, which go together. Um, and according to our insurance agents, that is pretty much um, being driven by industry standard, industry change. Um, you might al also notice on the documentation they sent us that the sexual abuse policy doubled, even though it was only $531 previously. Um, that is also an industry wide thing. It's not due to any sort of claims or anything. Uh, so the recommendation we would have is to uh, accept renewable premium, um, uh, Green Owens, O and I. This will be our second year with these guys, uh, totaling five hundred seventeen thousand five hundred seventy-two dollars. Greg, what efforts are there to compare um, this agent with others? You obtain other quotes. Um, we this year. Uh, since last year, we went through that process. Um, I know that this quote actually comes in lower than what we were paying two years ago. If you add in the property we've acquired since then. Okay. Questions for Greg, Shane, or Jeff? Uh, looks appropriate. I would move that we approve this uh, contract renewal. Second. Moved by Mr. Colvin, second by Mr. Rutherford for approval. Um, any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Greg. Mr. Rutherford, your turn. Move for approval of the claims as presented. Second. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Anything else for the good of the cause? Having seen none or heard of any, uh, we'll stand adjourned at 626 p.m. I'd like to thank Rick and his department for arranging this again. They've done a really good job getting us uh, out uh, to the public.